Hey everyone, welcome to this week's episode of NVTV. Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are going to be talking about debit card fraud. Um, sounds pretty simple, but it's actually not. So instead of hearing it from me that is not an expert, we're sitting down with Nan and Amy today. Thanks for sitting down with us, guys. You're welcome. Thank you. So let's start first with talking about what your background is with debit cards. It's They've been around for a while now. So what have you guys done to work with them so you've seen what's been happening? Um, so I actually started in banking in 1988. Um, which, uh, for those of you doing the math, that's a while ago. But um, we actually um, debit cards have been, you know, increasing in um, activity and use in the last few years. So I've been on all kinds of operations and compliance sides of the bank, as well as retail and branch administration, and most recently here um, with North Valley in the operations and compliance area, which we do actually maintenance and maintain all of the card processes. So. A lot of experience. Yeah. What about you, Nan? I've been in banking for over 30 years and probably been doing the debit card part of it for probably 25 plus years. So a lot of experience for you too. Yeah. So let's just start with the basics. I think we can all kind of guess what debit card fraud is just by putting the two words together. But what really, to a different level, is debit card fraud? Debit card fraud is actually a form of identity theft that involves either, you know, gathering someone's informa card information with the purposes and the intent of using it to either make purchases or um, take money from their from an account. Is there another side of it? Because I know there's there's debit card fraud from where someone gets your information, mm -hmm. and you know that's when you're out the money, and that's where you know we come in to try to fix it for you, but. There's got to be another side where people try to scam the bank, I would say. Yeah, another um, side to debit card fraud is it also involves the customer who might know that their card has been revoked or um, it's not available for their use or they don't have the funds in the account. So that's definitely a different part of um, what we would call debit card fraud is where the customer tries to perpetrate the fraud. So Nan, what are some common types of debit card fraud? Because there's got to be more than just one. Oh, there's... Yeah, there's all kinds. Um, I mean, there's anywhere from, you know, a fraudster taking or getting your debit card information and using it to buy, you know, anything from gift cards. That's the big thing is they go to um, different stores and buy gift cards. Um, or, you know, they do online purchases or um, it's, you know, sometimes too, it could be a family member. So how are they getting access to the cards to get this information so that they can, you know, go make these purchases? So that's a good point because there are a lot of different avenues for a fraudster or, um, you know, just someone in your own home. So one of the keys to, like, trying to limit that is keeping your card secure, keeping your PIN secure. Um, even that, if, it, if it's in your own house, family members, friends, we see that a, a lot where actually you just left your debit card unattended in your home and or you've written your PIN number down close to your card or on your card. That makes it a lot easier for someone to actually, you know, get access to your account via your card. Um, some of it is just that you lose or have the card stolen. And that, you know, that's kind of your more average card variety type of fraud. But someone could just, you know, you could lose the card and then someone finds it and, you know, tries to use it or whatever. So, yeah, there are a lot of different avenues. Um, one of the bigger ones as far as the percentage now, and Nan talked about it a little bit, is just um, via online. So, you know, everybody does everything online anymore, which is fine. I mean, you just have to be careful and you just have to know where you're going um, to the sites and things like that because a lot of times... Um, you know, you've got fraudsters out there that are sort of doing what we call phishing, and that's just that, you know, you're logging on to an email site, you're logging on to an online site. It kind of makes it look like your bank site, perhaps, 
but it's taking you to a place where you know they're trying to get your information, get your card information. Um, and again, with the number of things that we all do online, it's just one of those things that you have to be careful with. You have to understand the retailers that you're dealing with, the merchants that you're dealing with, and where you're purchasing things from or where you're trying to sign up for things for, um, because that's definitely a, a big avenue, a big percentage of the debit card fraud is through that avenue. Right, which like you said, we're doing everything online now, so. Right. It's so easy to just type in your debit card number and make that purchase. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, lots of times customers are just, you know, um, innocently trying to adhere to like requests that they're getting via the phone, via email, via online sites and putting in their information. But, uh, you know, again, I would caution you if you're giving out your debit card information, your debit card number make sure that you understand that you've either gone to a site or you're specifically trying to purchase something that you're you're comfortable with, you're familiar with, because we hear it a lot. Um, the customer will call and say, I just gave someone my debit card information. I'm not really sure about the company. I'm not really sure about that. It sounded like I was gonna get something free, but when I you know clicked to another page, it definitely charged my card. And so that, and, they, and they're a little panicked when they do that. So again, I think it's just, really important to protect your debit card number um, because all too many uh, cases now the fraudsters are trying to get your debit card number and they're, they're just calling you. They're asking you for it and we have folks giving it to them. So unless you're the one, you know, actually initiating, they, you know, and you're comfortable with where you're going, the site you're going, you've purchased from there before, it's a reputable company, you should just be very careful about giving out your debit card number. Yeah. And uh, so one thing I want to talk about that we talked about prior to you know, sitting down to talk about this and doing the interview is um, the 30-day trials. A lot of people sign up for 30-day trials, and there are things in the fine print that they're not reading, or maybe you know isn't being presented to them in a more obvious way. So, can you tell us a little bit about that? Because I know that's got to be something that you guys see a lot in your department. Yeah, if it says free, and you're putting in your debit card, then it's not free. So it's the fine print at the bottom that you really need to, you know, pay close attention to because it's probably telling you that within 14 days, if you don't, you know, call back and cancel this product, then you're going to be charged for the free trial. Um, And those are, you know, the kinds of things that, you know, a lot of, um, you know, people fall into, you know, if you're wanting, you know, weight loss pill or whatever and um you know you you know you think well this is you know won't hurt me because it's it's a free trial so you know it's not going to cost me anything well in the end it usually does right they wouldn't ask your debit card number if they're not going to charge you right right? i mean Mm -hmm. that's an odd piece of information to request if you're not eventually going to be charging you. well they're prepared for that what happens after the 30-day free trial you may very well get a 30-day free trial to something but they've charged you for it at the same time Mm -hmm. for what happens next and it's very difficult to like sort of go back to those merchants now and say and to prove that you didn't accept that because they have it you accepted it and somewhere in the fine print it did say and after that this is what the charge will be and you know you're going to agree to that somehow and i guess it's just hidden in stuff um you know kind of like the free is probably big and flashing but after that it's sort of like it, it was hidden and you t- and you agreed to a price and even though you think well I, after 30 days i'll just call back mm, it doesn't seem to work out as easily that way so that usually ends up being on um, the time they're contacting the bank and we're disputing a transaction for them Right, and I would, I, I guess I see that because if you think you're signing up for a 30-day trial, if you don't read the fine print, you think, well, in 30 right. days I'll just call and cancel it. But what you might not see in the fine print is it says if you don't cancel it within 10 to 14 days after yes. you agree, right. you're going to get charged six months worth or right. you know whatever that next step is, right. and that's scary to think about. Right, but like you said, it would be hard to dispute that because. You can't say you didn't sign up for right. it because you gave them your debit card mm-hmm. information. Yeah. So if I go to my, I'm a big fan of online banking. If I go to my online banking and I see that there is a charge that I don't recognize and I know I didn't sign up for, what should my next step be? Well, the biggest thing, um, you know, and speaking from a banking perspective, obviously, you're going to want to reach out to your bank 
um, your card issuer and, and indicate that you don't recognize the transaction. We'll talk through it a little bit more with you. Most banks are going to do the same thing. We'll talk through it a little bit more with you, understand, you know, kind of like recall what you might have been doing, what site you might have been on. Um, but the bottom line is, as a consumer, you really definitely need to understand your rights and responsibilities when it comes to um, having a card. And as well, the bank has the same rights and responsibilities. Anytime you're opening up your card, um, you're going to get that information in your account agreement. So just make sure that you either understand it or ask your, you know, card issuer, your banker, usually it's a bank, about that. But we're going to ask you to dispute those transactions. We're going to ask you to actually come in and um, sign something to say that you've disputed them, giving us the specific details, signing some documentation for us. And then that allows us to actually be able to begin our investigation about those disputed transactions. So there is an investigation done after you sign the dispute? Oh, yes. There's yes. definitely an investigation. So what kind of things do you do with the investigation when you're looking into it? Um, we're looking at um, we're, the biggest part that, you know, our responsibility is, you know, we're taking all the information from the customer. And then um, we're sending that to, like, our card vendor. And then they're doing more of the investigation part of it. So then, um, you know, they're looking at, you know, maybe, you know, the area or, you know, different stuff like that. So, um, but then, you know, once they actually will send that through the system and then, you know, they'll notify us or we get notification back from maybe the company, you know, saying that if the customer said it wasn't an author unauthorized, you know, transaction, you know, sometimes they'll send documentation, you know, saying that, you know, it was an authorized, you know, um, just different stuff you have to really, you know, look at and it's, um, you know, it's time consuming. It's, you know, not an easy process. So I'm sure because sometimes these claims are a lot of money. Yeah, they can be. And, you know, again, I think the people that need to understand that with a debit card purchase, um, that's coming directly out of your checking account. Um, so that can be, you know, traumatic for some folks and whatever. And I'm, that's why I'm saying the consumer just needs to understand what their rights and responsibilities are with regard to debit card transactions. Um, so if you have paperwork that you've gotten from the bank, and, and again, usually it's the bank or card issuer, um, you need to make sure that you understand it or ask questions about it because we have our processes that we have to definitely go through. Um, and we're going to be pretty upfront with you about, you know, the, here's the information that we're going to need. Here's the time frame which we're going to need it. Here's what our investigation will entail. And here's what that means for you about potentially getting um, provisional credit or final credit back for that. But we'll keep you informed along the way. Which is important. I mean, yes. if somebody's taking your money, you yes. know what's going on. Right. So it's good yes. to have that communication. Yes. So I guess my next big question is going to be how do we protect ourselves from debit card fraud? Yeah, that's a great question because there are lots of things that you can do. Um, the, the biggest thing being, and if you do have online banking, that's great, but routinely check your you know, account and your account balances. Um, make sure that there aren't things on there. Don't wait like you know, 90, 120 days, anything like that to kind of like check, but routinely check your accounts. Um, if you can go paperless on statements, like any time that we can keep that paper out of your mailbox, out of your trash, you know, cause some people aren't really very diligent about maybe like destroying that documentation like they should before they put it in their trash. So things like that, definitely if you have old debit cards because we've replaced it because it was expired or there was a compromise on it or you, you know, lost it or something like that and then you find it again, just make sure that you're destroying um, those types of debit cards. Um, you know, anything that you can do to keep your information out of somebody else's hands is, is the prudent thing to do. One of the things I know we always talk about is the web address. Make sure it has uh, HTTPS mm -hmm. at the beginning and it has the lock symbol saying that it's secure. Right. Um, I think it's important to check those things to make sure yes you're in a it, reputable site right and like we talked about a little earlier um you know one of the bigger scams out there is phishing so what that really means is that someone's gonna make that um email or that site look like maybe your bank site or maybe a site that you're used to seeing um but yeah checking those things that you're mentioning um is a really good idea 
um, using secure networks. I mean, everybody, you know, has to, you know, do something on a network or their phone or something like that. Just make sure that, you know, you're just not out someplace random that you're not really comfortable with how secure their network is to be looking up your bank account information and your debit card information and or ordering things or doing like that. So using a secure network is always a good idea as well. Yeah, which that makes sense. I think we should be doing that kind of regularly just right. to protect not just for debit card fraud but for anything yeah definitely yeah. yeah so when i file a dispute i come into the bank i file a dispute what is the bank's responsibility to the consumer that's filling out that form so the bank definitely has um, their own set of rights and responsibilities as far as um, disputed transactions whether that's anything electronic but specifically i'm um, speaking to the debit card piece so once you indicate to us that you have um, unauthorized transactions that's kind of where the top the clock starts clicking ticking as far as like um, the number of days that we have so we have to act upon that immediately we have to take your documentation we have to make sure that it's completed with all the required information that you've signed it and then that kind of starts in general like a 10-day window for us so basically we have um, that investigation period of 10 days um, we will send it through the processes that Nan talked about a little earlier and then um, see if our investigation yields the information that we need it to yield to be able to give you final credit back for those disputed items or if there's additional time that we might need, we're also afforded that additional time too, which can take it out a, bit, a little bit longer. But in general, you once you say that it's unauthorized, we have certain responsibilities that we have to adhere to and we do that by getting that information and writing from you, getting your signature and then that 10-day time period starts for us to actually be able to begin the investigation and hopefully um, either provisionally credit or finally credit for you if we are able to get that disputed money back. I think it's good to know for people who don't work in banking that we do have time frames that we have to abide by and we are working. We definitely do. We definitely do. And that's why I'm saying that, you know, I know that when you're opening a bank account, when you're um, actually applying for a card, a debit card specifically, um, there's a there's paperwork that you get with this. And, and I just say that, you know, just as to be an informed consumer, understand what that paperwork talks about, because it definitely lays out what your re rights and responsibilities are as the consumer, but also what ours is as the bank or the card issuer. And that um, there are different definite time frames that are at play there. And we want to make sure that you understand with regard to our error resolution process what you need to do. Those documents all say what our error resolution process is and it'll say who you have to contact, how you have to contact us, what phone number, what email address, and what you know address you would do that to. The crucial information. Right. Right. So outside of the bank's responsibilities and the consumer's responsibilities, are there any other resources out there that people can, you know, whether it's a website or someone they can go talk to to learn more about debit card fraud? Yeah, um, actually, we've come up with a few um, that we feel have the most, um, you know, large amount of information that's probably the best for most of our customers. Um, one of them is ftc.gov um, backslash scams. Um, another is aarp.org and the other is consumer reports, all one word, .org. Those seem to be three that are pretty much um, having most of the information about what just the normal um, types of things that you need to be aware of. The biggest types of scams that are out there now, some of those ones that you can maybe recognize that you're thinking, oh, I got a call about that last week. That seems like it's a scam. Just the more informed you can be about what the fraudsters are doing because you know, they're working real hard too to stay one step ahead of financial organizations, card issuers, to be able to obtain that information illegally from um, customers about their cards so that they can commit this type of fraud. Right. And I, th I think it's good that we're giving people credi credible websites to go to. I mean, FTC is the Federal Trade Commission. Right. There, if anybody's on top of it, that it's them. AARP knows a lot about you know, elderly abuse and because unfortunately they're targeted a lot and it's unfair, right. but it's a great resource to have. So I'm glad we can, you know, provide those to people. Yeah, those seem to be the ones that, you know, w within the industry um, are, you know, highly touted as having a lot of information, a lot of re good resources that can give you an idea of maybe what's going on out there. Well, Amy and Ann, thank you guys so much for sitting down with us today. This was really good information. Hopefully we can save somebody from some fraud happening on their debit card. Um, if you need resources, you know, we've given you a couple good websites. If you have questions, please feel free to call us. We have a great deposit ops team. All of our people in our branches are very well educated and can help you. Um, send us a message. Like always, we're here to help. 
Um, hopefully we'll hear from you guys soon and we'll see you next week on NVTV.